Dextrinization is a fascinating chemical process that occurs when starches, the building blocks of carbohydrates, are subjected to heat. This process is not just a simple reaction but a complex transformation that plays a crucial role in cooking and food science. When we apply heat to foods rich in starch, such as bread, potatoes or grains, we initiate a series of changes at the molecular level. These changes are what give cooked foods their distinctive flavors, textures and appearances. This process transforms the structure of starch molecules, leading to noticeable changes in the taste, texture, and appearance of food. For instance, when you bake a loaf of bread, the heat causes the starches in the dough to break down and form dextrins, which contribute to the bread's golden brown crust and delicious flavor. Similarly, when you roast coffee beans, dextrinization is responsible for the rich, complex flavors that develop. In essence, dextrinization is responsible for the browning of toast, the crusty exterior of bread, and the unique flavors of roasted coffee beans. This process is not limited to just these examples, it occurs in many other foods as well. Whenever you cook or bake something that contains starch, dextrinization is likely taking place. Starches are complex carbohydrates found in a wide variety of plant-based foods including grains, potatoes and legumes. These foods are staples in many diets around the world, and are valued for their energy-providing properties. The starches in these foods are made up of long chains of glucose molecules, which are the basic units of carbohydrates. They are made up of long chains of glucose molecules, linked together like beads on a string. These chains can be quite large and complex, and their structure is what gives starches their unique properties. When we heat these starches, the heat energy causes the bonds between the glucose molecules to break, leading to the formation of smaller molecules called dextrins. When heated, these chains begin to break down and rearrange, resulting in smaller, simpler molecules known as dextrins. This breakdown process is what we call dextrinization. The formation of dextrins not only changes the chemical structure of the starches, but also their physical properties such as solubility and digestibility. This breakdown process is what we call dextrinization. It's a crucial process in cooking as it not only affects the flavor and color of food but also its digestibility. Foods that have undergone dextrinization are often easier to digest because the starches have been broken down into simpler molecules that our bodies can more readily absorb. It's a crucial process in cooking, as it not only affects the flavor and color of food but also its digestibility. Understanding dextrinization can help us make better choices in the kitchen, whether we're baking, roasting, or frying. By mastering this process we can enhance the flavors and textures of our dishes, making them more enjoyable to eat. Understanding dextrinization can help us unlock the secrets behind many culinary techniques and appreciate the complex chemistry that occurs every time we cook. So, the next time you enjoy a piece of toast or a cup of coffee, remember the fascinating science of dextrinization that makes these foods so delicious. Imagine a loaf of bread, baking in the oven. The aroma fills the kitchen, and you can almost taste the warm, crusty bread, fresh out of the oven. But have you ever wondered what exactly happens to the dough as it bakes? As the temperature rises, the heat energy begins to penetrate the dough, causing the water inside to turn into steam. This steam helps the dough to rise and expand, creating those lovely air pockets that make bread so light and fluffy. This heat sets off a chain of events that transforms the raw ingredients into a golden brown loaf. The proteins in the flour coagulate and the starches gelatinize, giving the bread its structure and texture. At the heart of this transformation lies dextrinization. This is a crucial process where the starches in the dough break down into simpler sugars, which then caramelize and give the bread its beautiful brown color and complex flavors. Heat acts as a catalyst, providing the energy needed to break the chemical bonds, holding starch molecules together. This is why the temperature of your oven is so important. At temperatures above 180 degrees Celsius, or 356 degrees Fahrenheit, the long chains of glucose molecules and starch begin to unravel, a process known as starch hydrolysis. This is a key step in the baking process. This breakdown process is gradual and depends on several factors, including the type of starch, the amount of moisture present, and most importantly, the temperature. Different types of starches react differently to heat, and the moisture content in the dough can affect how quickly the starches break down. The higher the temperature, the faster the rate of dextrinization. This is why a slice of bread toasts much faster at a higher setting on your toaster. 
The intense heat speeds up the breakdown of starches and the caramelization of sugars. This explains why a slice of bread toasts much faster at a higher setting on your toaster. The intense heat speeds up the breakdown of starches and the caramelization of sugars, giving you that perfect golden brown toast in a matter of minutes. Understanding the relationship between heat and dextrinization allows us to control the cooking process and achieve desired results. By adjusting the temperature we can influence the texture, color, and flavor of the bread. For instance a slow, gentle heat is preferred for baking bread, allowing it to rise and cook evenly, while a high dry heat is ideal for achieving a crispy crust on a loaf. This knowledge empowers bakers to create a variety of bread textures and flavors, from soft and chewy to crisp and crunchy. To fully grasp the concept of dextrinization, it's essential to delve into the chemical reactions taking place at a molecular level. Starch hydrolysis, the process of breaking down starch molecules with the addition of water, plays a crucial role in dextrinization. When heat is applied to starch granules in the presence of moisture, the water molecules penetrate the starch structure, weakening the bonds between glucose units. This weakening allows the long starch chains to break apart into smaller fragments, primarily dextrins, but also maltose and glucose. These smaller molecules are responsible for the changes we observe in the taste, texture and appearance of cooked starches. Dextrins in particular contribute to the browning of food, the formation of a crispy crust, and a sweeter flavor. The extent of starch hydrolysis depends on factors like temperature, time, and the presence of enzymes or acids. For example, the enzymes in saliva initiate starch hydrolysis in our mouths, aiding in the digestion of carbohydrates. Section 4. A Toast to Dextrinization, the Maillard Reaction and Flavor Development. Dextrinization doesn't act alone in transforming the flavor and aroma of cooked foods. It is a crucial process, but it often works in harmony with another significant chemical reaction that is equally important in the culinary world. This other reaction is known as the Maillard reaction, named after the French chemist Louis Camille Maillard, who first described it in the early 20th century. This reaction is fundamental to the development of complex flavors in a wide variety of foods. The Maillard reaction occurs between amino acids and reducing sugars, producing a complex array of flavor compounds that contribute to the desirable taste and aroma of cooked foods. This reaction is responsible for the browning and flavor development in many types of food, from meats to vegetables. In the context of bread baking, for example, dextrinization and the Maillard reaction work in tandem to create the characteristic golden brown crust and toasted flavor. The heat from the oven initiates these reactions, transforming the dough into a delicious loaf of bread. As the bread bakes, the heat triggers dextrinization, breaking down starch molecules into dextrins and sugars. These sugars are essential for the Maillard reaction to occur as they react with amino acids present in the dough. These sugars then react with amino acids present in the dough through the Maillard reaction, generating hundreds of volatile compounds that impart the familiar aroma and taste of baked bread. This intricate dance of chemical reactions is what makes freshly baked bread so irresistible. The interplay between dextrinization and the Maillard reaction is not limited to bread, it plays a vital role in the flavor development of countless other cooked foods such as roasted coffee, grilled meats, and even chocolate. Each of these foods undergoes a unique set of reactions that contribute to their distinctive flavors and aromas. For instance, the roasting of coffee beans involves a complex series of Maillard reactions that develop the rich, deep flavors we associate with a good cup of coffee. Similarly, the grilling of meats and the melting of chocolate are processes where these reactions are crucial in creating the final, delectable product. Section 5. Beyond the Bread Basket, Dextrinization in Other Foods While bread baking offers a prime example of dextrinization in action, this versatile process extends its influence far beyond the realm of baking. Fish cereals to crispy fried foods, Dextrinization plays a crucial role in shaping the texture and flavor of numerous culinary creations. Consider the satisfying crunch of a breakfast cereal. The manufacturing is exposing grains to controlled heat and moisture, inducing dextrinization to achieve the desired level of crispness. Similarly, when potatoes are fried, the heat triggers dextrinization in the surface layer, creating a golden crispy exterior while maintaining a soft, fluffy interior. 
Even in the realm of sauces and gravies, dextrinization plays a crucial role. When flour is cooked in fat, as in a roux, the heat triggers dextrin starch molecules and allowing them to absorb and thicken liquids more effectively.